I'm freshly cleaned, you know what that means. Fat shit, thin people will never understand. Part four. Now before I begin, nobody is complaining. This is to make other fat people who relate laugh. If you are fat and you do not relate, please do not leave a comment such as, I am such height and such weight and I don't have these problems. Good, this video isn't for you, okay? All right, let's get into it. Motherfucking tiny ass public restroom stalls. And when the door opens inward and you have to sneak hover over the toilet just to get in and you can't even get your arm around you to wipe your ass. Ah! When you're out to eat and the table is bolted to the floor. What the fuck? Some of us don't want the table all up in our rib cage, okay? Squishing all of our organs. Now hear me out. Some picnic tables got wide enough seats and they're far enough away from the table. But some are just too damn close. It's like your whole butt is hanging off the end of it. Or worse, your rolls or your titties is just hanging out, you know, just hanging out right here. This, this is where they sit. I don't make the rules. Or when not, you have to get out of your seat to sit on this thing. God damn it. I hate, I hate these exam tables. I, I think everybody hates these exam tables, but like, your, your, your legs go numb, your feet go numb, or they swell up, and you... They want you to lay down and your titties are in your face. It's just, it's not a good time. It's not. Y'all, don't even get me started on this one. This one hurts my feelings because I'm a cosmetology student. Salon chairs. Everybody deserves to feel welcomed in a salon. That is where you're going to go get pampered, get your hair done, get your makeup done, facial, nails, anything. And you can't fit in the chair. I hate that. I hate that. Now, some salons have the good chairs that are wide and hold up to 400, 500 pounds. But just, there's so many people who don't fit in the chairs. And if they try to get themselves in the chairs, they, you could possibly break it. And then that's it, a whole embarrassing ordeal that nobody deserves to go through. The disrespect, you're already there anxious thinking that your stylist is judging you. You don't, you don't need to be anxious about the chair you have to put your ass in. Excuse me? The fuck? Why are the majority of you soaking up the knowledge of how to kill and dispose of a body? You're looking at women's obsession with true crime as the perpetrator of the crimes. We are looking at true crimes as the victim of the crimes. You were talking about how knowledge is utilitarian. Why are we learning how to kill people and hide the body? We're not. You want to know what I learned from true crime? Ted Bundy pretended to be injured to lure women into helping him and then he killed them. I learned if your arms are cut off and you're dumped into a ravine, you can make blood, you can make packs to stop the blood with dirt from the ground and then crawl your way out of a ravine. I've learned trying to endear yourself to an attacker or a kidnapper will make them be nicer to you. Men and women live in very different worlds. We're trying to survive it. Health is like really important to me, so I hate body positivity. Did you just see a body positivity post on social media? Yeah, there was this fat chick in a bikini and it really upset me because like it's gonna promote obesity and make people want to be unhealthy. Mm, so you want to be fat? Gross, no. So then it's not really promoting obesity. Yes, it is. So you think when a fat person posts pictures about how they love their body, it makes thin people want to be fat? What? Well, yeah, because if I'm promoting something, I'm trying to make people who don't have it want it. So if fat people posting a picture of themselves existing in a bikini is promoting obesity, theoretically thin people would see it and then would want to be fat. No? <laughs> no. So what do you mean by promoting? Well, it's telling people who are fat that they can be, like, happy. So it bothers you that people are telling people that they can love their bodies no matter what size it is? Yeah. Because in the name of health, we want people to be unhappy? Exactly. Wait. 
In my experience, the process of accepting turf ideology comes in stages. Chances are, when you first encounter these people online, you won't notice it. They blend in with other feminists by offering pretty popular takes, such as critiques of makeup and plastic surgery. There's nothing wrong with these takes, this is how they just get you to follow them initially. At this point, they probably won't even call themselves TERFs or gender critical. Once you follow enough of them, you'll be enticed to interact with their circles because they're formatted a lot like cliques. That's when you'll probably be introduced to their views on sex work, which is that all sex work is sexual assault. This is a position that is particularly appealing to young feminists who aren't well-read on non-Western perspectives. They receive backlash for this take, and rightfully so, but their clique-like structure makes it really easy to deflect criticism. This gets used to their us-versus-them mentality and this notion that TERFs are the real truth-tellers. That way, when you end up seeing their perspectives on trans people, you'll end up giving them the benefit of the doubt, even if it strikes you in initially as transphobic. And because of the social circle they've created, you'll at least tolerate and defend these views. Do that enough times and you'll eventually subscribe to them yourself. The comment section of this video is so painful. It's a bunch of dudes being like, ooh, that guy got friend zoned. Fellas, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You should be friends with women. Like, just friends. Like, no, oh, I hope that we date one day or any of that. Just friends. There's a bunch of reasons, the obvious one being that you should be friends with them for the same reason you should be friends with men or non-binary people, because they're cool. But if you want to get a little deeper than that, being friends with women proves that you don't just see them as an object of sexual attraction. Your only interactions with women go in either romantic or sexual directions. You are, whether you admit it to yourself or not, treating them as an object to be conquered instead of as another human being worthy of your unconditional love and respect. So make friends with women without expecting sexual or romantic interactions in the future. Your urge to get sucked off is closing off an entire gender of people to make wonderful lasting friendships with. <laughs> Hey there, hi, my name is Mercury, I'm the trans maintenance lady, and I'm asked all the time if there are, is a toolkit that I recommend for new homeowners or for renters, and I really don't recommend toolkits. Toolkits usually have cheaper tools and don't always have the things you actually need. So here are three tools you can get at any store and then you can have in your home, okay? Nature is gonna help us present these tools. The first tools we wanna do is this beautiful vice grips um, adjustable wrench. This is great for plumbing. This is your Allen wrench set. This is a standard Allen wrench set. This is good for garbage disposals and set screws and a bunch of different things. Now this is your multi-screwdriver. It could be a flathead, a Phillips, and it could be a nut driver. It's super handy, keep this for sure. These are just some tools that can help you. I'll keep on doing more of these videos, but for now, here's the cat. Alright, so I wasn't going to do this because I didn't want to give this guy any more attention, but I feel like this is a great moment to share with ladies everywhere who have gone through the similar struggle that I have, um, that you don't owe it to anyone to tell your story. You also don't owe it to anybody to keep your mouth shut about your story or to wait until it's a moment that makes them comfortable or makes them feel like they can come in white knighting and, and sweep you off your feet and you're still the victim and you're still helpless and they have a value in that conversation. So uh, for whoever needs to hear this, tell your story whenever you want to, wherever you want to, to whomever you want to, or don't tell it to anybody. Whatever helps you heal, do that and don't listen to shitbags like this fuckface. I find it so funny how white people created the social construct of race so that they could be racist, going even as far as creating institutional oppression in the form of slavery, segregation, the caste system, really making sure that every part of society revolved around race. And yet when BIPOC people start talking about race so that we can address racism and colorism, all of a sudden we're the ones who make everything about race, us. <laughs> They're so funny. White people are so funny. Are you under the impression that this is an either or situation? I can either care about the fact that white women have and do experience patriarchal oppression at the hands of white men, or I can care about the lingering effects of chattel slavery and systemic racism. Just because I'm talking about a form of oppression that we white women have not experienced, specifically chattel slavery, 
does not negate the fact that we have and still do to some extent experience oppression from the patriarchy. And why do you think that these two things are separate? Every form of patriarchal oppression white women have experienced, black women have also experienced, compounded by racism. And the uncomfortable fact here is that while we white women love to complain about the patriarchy, when it comes time to vote or to actually advocate for change, we are far more likely to align ourselves with the interests of white men than we are to align ourselves with the interests of women of color. This is not the oppression Olympics, but if it were, we would not be on the podium. There's one thing you can expect from me, and that's the unexpected. Cause I'm an international Super spy. Super spy! Super spy! Darker toned people, am I the only one who dealt with this? <laughs> um, so, I'm pretty much like the only dark skinned person in my family, besides my dad, but like, I don't live with him. And, you know, the rest of my family is kind of like brown skin, like, they're not light skin, but you know, they're not dark, dark, you know? So as we all know, summer, you know, your skin tans naturally if you're out in the sun. And every summer, they would always be like, oh my gosh, ew, my skin is so dark. I can't wait for it to be winter time so I can go back to my normal tone. And it didn't feel nice. It, I, uh, <laughs> because even in the winter time, my skin is still way darker than theirs is in the summertime. And like, what was wrong with their skin being darker? I never understood. I don't know, my tripping.